Have you ever wondered what a truly inclusive society looks like? Or what biases, beliefs, and standards we have that limit us from ever really achieving one? There are moments, mistakes, judgment lapses that can hinder any person from becoming the best version of themselves. But what if every person had the option and the opportunity to not have their worst moment be their most defining moment, but instead be an opportunity for growth and redemption? For the past three years, I've had the amazing chance to work with returning citizens across the state of Tennessee. Men and women striving to rebuild their lives despite their past and what lies behind them, hopeful about their future and what lies ahead of them. I have witnessed firsthand these individuals eager for opportunity and change be denied housing, work, bank accounts, and basic civil rights. According to Vera Institute's 2018 The State of Justice Reform, each year, nearly 600,000 men and women are released from correctional facilities, both state and federal, 9 million from local jails, and 2.5 million from probation and parole. That's nearly 12 million people each year that are then categorized based on their past instead of their future potential. And the perception may be this only impacts the returning citizen, when in actuality, it affects everyone around them, their family, their friends, and their community, which consists of you and me. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Five years, this data had to have changed. And it has. Instead of 600,000 individuals released each year, according to the U.S. Department of Justice, we're now at 650,000. That's roughly an 8% increase. And while progression is definitely worthy of celebration, there are still major issues around reentry, reform, and equity that have to be addressed. In his 2004 State of the Union address, President George W. Bush said this. We know from long experience that if they can't find work, a home, or help, they are much more likely to commit more crimes and return back to prison. He went on to say this. America is the land of the second chance. When the gates to the prison open, the path ahead should lead to a better life. <sighs> Creating an inclusive society requires work. It requires effort. And nearly two decades later, we're still asking the question, where did we begin? Diversity, equity, and inclusion have been trending topics for decades. But it's not something that is just about tolerance. It requires us to collectively collaborate to create environments where everyone can thrive. There are laws and regulations that protect populations of people based on key identifying factors that they can be labeled or categorized by. However, in many instances, returning citizens are not included in those protections. For example, a returning citizen can be denied housing for up to 99 years past the date of their charge. 99 years. Employers can create candidate profiles that immediately disqualify someone based on their background, even though we've banned the box. These are just two examples of collateral consequences things and punishments that exceed the sentence and continue to have a negative impact on a person's life. Things like housing, gainful employment, 
bank accounts, civil rights, the very things we associate with the American dream. Creating an inclusive society is not just a noble aspiration. It's a collective responsibility that demands our commitment. It's not just about tolerance, okay? It's about collectively working together to create spaces where everyone can thrive. Offering a second chance is more than just an act of generosity. It showcases our belief in the power of redemption and in humanity. The journey towards an inclusive society is challenging, difficult, but it's a journey that we have to undertake because together we can create a world where everyone can thrive despite their past. Thank you.